Hello and welcome to the Alliance for Democracies, the Populist Dialogues. My name is David Delk. I host this program. Today, our guests are Lee Mercer, who is a director and small business organizer with the Main Street Alliance of Oregon, and Jim Hauser, who is co-chair of the Main Street Alliance of Portland, as well as the co-owner of the Hawthorne Auto Clinic here in Portland. So welcome to the show. Well, thank you, David. Yeah, thank you very much. Good, yeah. So, beginning. What is the Main Street Alliance? Okay, well, the Main Street Alliance started out uh, three plus years ago. It really began partially in response to uh, federal health defo uh, ref uh, reform debate. Um, and we, uh, we in Oregon, as well as several other states, realized that small businesses were not necessarily being s spoken for by the, a lot of the national business groups and often the kinds of small businesses that populate Oregon um, look at the National Chamber and then NFIB and groups like that and feel like they're not actually speaking for uh, a point of view that they're experiencing. So um, we've had a series of organizers in Oregon and we're, we're affiliated with several Main Street alliances, Washington, uh, Montana, Idaho, there's about 10 states that are doing the Main Street Alliance organizing and we basically have been bringing the real voice of small business into policy debate starting with federal health reform and then moving into other areas in the last couple of years at this point in Oregon we have uh, uh, around 700 organizations as correspondent businesses around the state we have strengths in certain areas and we want to hit more areas but we have businesses that speak up on issues and Jim Hauser especially um, has come out very strongly on the need for health reform and and how important the Affordable Care Act has been um, for small businesses in it as it rolls out um, and um, so he's been one of our leading spokespersons as well as business people on our board from Salem Bend um, Central Point and around the around the state okay all right and I, I think that you were in Washington DC for Obama's State of the Union address last year, or was it the year before? Yeah, it was uh, uh, a year, just a little over a year ago. Uh -huh. um, I had actually had um, the opportunity to go back with other small business owners uh, on several occasions to meet with our congressional delegation uh, as the Affordable Care Act was being uh, created in order to uh, make sure that the interests of small business were included. Um, in the proposal, so we made uh, several several trips back, and then in September, a year and a half ago or so, um, actually the six month anniversary of the signing of the Affordable Care Act, I had the opportunity to go back. I was invited by uh, uh, the Secretary of Health and Human Services to um, a, a backyard event that was attended by uh, President Obama to commemorate that six month. Um, I was one of two people there sort of representing the interests of small business, the small businesses that were going to be uh, uh, helped in large measure. And then somehow I was fortunate enough to be invited back again by the First Lady mm -hmm. to sit with her um, and about 20 other um, people uh, from around the country um, uh, to, to uh, participate in the uh, State of the Union address. Um, we had a, uh, a um, reception at the White House and then they sped us over to Congress and we mm -hmm. sat there. It was an amazing, just, uh, I don't know how I should be so fortunate. That was wonderful. <laughs> yeah, you know, sometimes, sometimes fate and uh, opportunity thrust these yes. things onto us, right? Yes. Yeah, so, well, very good. So, um, it's been two years, I think, since the signing of the Affordable Care Act. What have you and the Main Street Alliance done to see that it got passed, and why do you think it's important for Main Street as opposed to Wall Street? Well, I can say myself from my, my own experience, um, 
when uh, my wife and I started Hawthorne Auto Clinic 29 years ago, we had made a commitment to provide those that worked with us um, good benefits, including full health care for our employees and their families. But uh, that, and at the time, it seemed like not unreasonable, but from 2001 to about 2008, our uh, health care premiums doubled to over $100,000 a year for nine full-time employees and their families, 20% of payroll. I mean, it was just unsustainable, that level uh, of, of expense. I mean, nobody, we, there was no way we could raise our rates to, to cover that. Mm -hmm. And that was at, at the time that the um, uh, Main Street Alliance came up Hawthorne Boulevard just going door to door trying to um, uh, sign people up, see who would be uh, willing to, to become involved. And uh, that was the point at which I signed up uh, along with several other uh, small businesses throughout the state actually. And we made uh, s several trips, as I said, back to Washington, D.C. Plus, here in the state, we, um, at, at Hawthorne Auto Clinic, we uh, hosted a, a round table for Senator Merkley uh, to um, visit with and listen to people with health care issues that uh, uh, needed to be addressed by the Affordable Care Act. I participated with Rep Representative Blumenauer uh, in a couple of events uh, around the health care reform. And uh, so that you know, uh, just making sure that the interests of small business were included in whatever whatever came up. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Good. And since that has since that has gone into effect, have you seen any specific changes or benefits to to you as a as a small business owner? There are several. Um, one, of course, is the small business tax credit. Um, we had initially anticipated our credit would be between five and ten thousand dollars, and uh, at the State of the Union, um, the president mentioned that he, uh, in the discussion about whether the health reform should be repealed, he said, "I don't want to tell Jim Hauser he's going to have to give five thousand dollars back that he expects to get." In fact, our credit was twelve thousand nine hundred and three dollars, oh. which is over one month's premiums. It it. When you subtract that from our premiums, it puts us back to what we were paying in probably 2007. Mm -hmm. So that that's huge. Mm -hmm. um, the other big advantage we now have uh, that was just signed this week is the uh, health insurance exchange. That uh, program, w uh, which is a state-based, the, the Affordable Care Act is primarily state-based health reform. Each state has the. So it's a federal. It's a federal law, but it mandates a state federal to do law something. mandating each state take responsibility, but it's given a lot of freedom on how to how to implement it in each state. If they don't care to do it, then the federal government's willing to come in and set it up. Oh, mm -hmm. But Oregon has been very active. They actually had been attempting in, in the works to create an exchange even before um, the Affordable Care Act, but the state get get a lot of federal money to accelerate the process. And uh, I've been on the advisory uh, group that participated before the exchange was created um, in helping to set up the, the exchange has two uh, groups. One is uh, individual insured and the other small businesses. And so I've been, uh, I was asked to participate in the advisory to that. And once the uh, health insurance exchange was in place, um, I, on the Consumer Advisory uh, Committee, the official com Consumer Advisory Committee for the exchange, and uh, one of our other uh, directors uh, statewide, uh, uh, Jose Gonzalez, is actually on the Health Insurance uh, Exchange Board. Oh, mm -hmm. um, so he, he represents um, uh, the board statewide. So we have been continually involved. And then the one other thing is the uh, rate review, the uh, Affordable Care Act provides many new opportunities for state insurance commissioners, uh, Teresa M Miller, as I believe is her name here, um, to become much more active in rate review. Uh, and I've been, and I've served on the advisory to Osberg, Oregon Student Public Interest Research Group, who has been uh, hired by the state to help with rate review um, when insurance companies 
put forth rates. And uh, in this last year, uh, the state of Oregon got much more active, and they calculate they've saved Oregon consumers $37 million over what was proposed by the various insurance companies that was not allowed by rate review. Um, so $37, less, $37 million less in premiums they're paying as a result of the rate review uh, opportunities provided by the Affordable Care Act. Okay. All right. So we keep talking about exchanges, and I th I think that you know m most people have heard of them. I have no clue what they are or what their purpose is. Yeah, it's f pretty interesting, uh -huh. and it's somewhat complex. But you can think of it in some ways like um, Yelp or uh, one of, or, or or Amazon even uh, dot com. It's 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 an opportunity for. Um, Originally, they're going to, uh, initially they're predicting 280 to 300,000 Oregonians. Eventually, probably 800 to 900,000 Oregonians, many of whom have not been able to purchase insurance before at all, will now have the opportunity uh, to to purchase insurance. Um, a lot of it will be online. You'll be able to review uh, a range of different insurance policies, and. Um, Part of the, the uh, provisions of the Affordable Care Act is you have to be able to compare apples to apples. It has to be in plain language um, what you're going to be able to purchase in the way of health insurance. Um, but the other big advantage is with that big a buying group, um, the health insurance exchange is going to have uh, tremendous leverage to get for quality of care for uh, the uh, uh, range of options and for price to negotiate for the price on uh, on health insurance for uh, both small businesses and for individual uh, rate uh, consumers okay yeah okay yeah and, and did did the main street alliance uh, play a role in this development of these exchanges here in oregon well that was my job on the uh, advisory okay. was, uh, and there were other small businesses as well, there, there are several small businesses that have been, uh, and we've been very involved in, in exactly that, in uh, how, to, how to make the exchange uh, more um, affordable, uh, how to make better quality, how to make better buying decisions, um, more uh, transparent, Yes. Okay. All right. Good. And is the work that you're doing on this health care, is that similar work that's being done in other states where the Main Street Alliance is at? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, however, Oregon's much further ahead than most other states. <laughs> yeah, and, 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 and there's going to be a continuing engagement on this. So the um, health exchange bill just passed the legislature, but now that means Jim and Jose are going to be in involved in and sitting on top of the rulemaking process where the legislation has been passed but now it has to be implemented and in the rulemaking in the in the deet in the, de the, the devil in the will detail. be in the detail, yes. details details mm -hmm. for this and so we're we're engaging continually on that but for example even on the affordable care act there are pieces that um, folks are still trying to improve obama came out in his most recent, or in his budget proposal, with expanding the health care for uh, health care credit for small businesses from where it is now to actually uh, up to 50 full time equivalency. So, up to small businesses with 50 employees with a payroll average under 50,000 and with uh, groups that are providing at least 50% of the cost of the health care, it would expand dramatically the number of businesses right now that would be um, eligible for the, the uh, federal health care credit that Jim knows about and a number of people know about. But as I traveled around doing the canvassing for um, Main Street Alliance, I realized a lot of small businesses don't know about this credit. Mm -hmm. I spoke with a, uh, tax, uh, a, a tax accountant on Hawthorne the other day, and he says he gets it and some of his people get it, but a lot of folks don't even know mm -hmm. that the credit is there. So there's a lot of outreach to be done. Yeah. Yes. Right. Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. So this is not one of the things we talked about, but I, th I, I have long been an advocate for single pay. Mm -hmm. Health mm -hmm. Medicare mm -hmm. for all Canadian style health care. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Is it? Do, do you see this as a step in that direction, or or was this? Uh, um, 
No, let's leave it at that. Do you see that as a step in the direction of, of getting a single payer health care system at some point? It depends on how well this works. If this isn't able uh, to do what it purports to do, then I would say that would be the next reasonable step to attempt. Um, that would be a big step. Uh, it would mean dismantling a considerable um, uh, framework in place, and insurance companies, mm -hmm. employees, mm -hmm. uh, individual, every, you know, everybody has their own insurance company. Mm -hmm. um, it would be a big step practically and politically. Um, so I'm still working real hard to make this work, but I think that's not an unreasonable um, expectation to, to have out there single payer. And I think the uh, existence of a, a good, strong single payer campaign will go a long way toward keeping the exchange and the other um, reforms uh, honest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, within that context, we are um, co-sponsoring an event April 27th that would be the next level of health care. And some of the national experts on international health care, how the U.S. doesn't match up to international health care, how competition works in the marketplace, and, and how uh, there, for example, in Vermont, where they went through a legislative process where they did a study on what is the best way to do health care, and a variant on single payer was developed out of that legislative mm -hmm. process. So this group on April 27th will be having a forum with several national experts plus Bruce Goldberg, the head of our Oregon Health Authority, mm -hmm. will be speaking. And these are uh, efforts on our part to keep that larger conversation going on yes. on yeah. health care reform. Okay. Yeah, and then yeah. as as we conclude our program, we'll get the details of, of that on, okay. on the screen for everybody to yeah. see. Okay. Uh, besides the health care issue, what else, what, what, what other policies are, or is uh, Main Street Alliance concerned with? Well, and I'll back up a little bit and talk about, so Main Street Alliance of Oregon, as well as the other groups that are doing this work, really are listening to small businesses. And our organizing model goes back to old-fashioned community organizing. Jim talked about when he first came to Oregon mm -hmm. in 1965 and worked for Vista. This, oh, yeah. we literally go door to door and city to, city to city throughout the state talking to small businesses. Often it's on the iconic Main Street or Broadway or Water Street or whatever the main downtown is, because mm -hmm. that's where the independent business, businesses tend to be clustered. And we are surveying right now and listening to what um, or what businesses are thinking about in terms of what they're going through. And what we're hearing in the surveying, which is going to influence our work, um, there's a huge percentage of the folks that we're talking to that are very concerned uh, that corporations are getting a free ride on taxes in this country, or, or they're very concerned about corporate loopholes. Um, and they're also um, concerned about the corporate influence in politics. Mm -hmm. And the Citizens United decision of all the questions we're asking, um, we're getting, this is walking in the door in a shop on Main Street and the first question is about Citizens United and do you think that's good or bad for small business? 83% of the people I'm talking to across the political spectrum uh, think it's bad mm -hmm. and a very small percentage think it's good obviously but and the second question is Let, should, let's just mm -hmm. before we do that, sure. Citizens United of course is the Supreme Court decision right. which they said that Corporations are able, and unions, um, primarily corporations, are able to take money directly out of their treasury to fund so-called independent political right. campaigns. Right. Just, just so everybody knows, right. uh, yes, on limited, right? Yeah, <laughs> right. And, and, and and mostly undisclosed, or yeah. at least right. not disclosed until after the election is has taken place. Right. Okay. I'm, and yeah, so, go ahead. and so, what we're hearing is not only do they feel like this is bad. On our second question, we immediately ask, do you would you support a constitutional amendment? saying that, that corporations are not people and money is not speech. And this is across the political spectrum of the businesses I'm walking into. 74% at this point say, yes, I'd support a constitutional amendment. Mm -hmm. And then when you talk about corporate disclosure, disclosure of who's getting the money and where is it going, which is now out of control with the super PACs, 91% mm -hmm. say we need corp a disclosure on where all this ele electoral money is flowing. So. There's a lot of energy there, and then there's a lot of energy around tax reform in terms of 
um, loopholes for the corporations and the wealthy mm -hmm. and so forth. But back to your original question, so those are two major areas, money and politics mm -hmm. and kind of tax reform and making our system more fair. Uh, yeah, um, yeah I, I, I know mm -hmm. for myself in Alliance for Democracy, we see yeah. those as fundamental yeah. structural yeah. questions mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. the policies that we all need to address and you know most of the other kinds of questions that we have are not going to be solved until we get right. that large corporate right. uh, special interest money out of the, out of the political system. Yeah. Yeah, I just noticed, actually, I went, we, we did an alert this week through Main Street Alliance in Oregon, but all our national groups did it. We are actually partnering with National Alliance for Democracy on a call for small businesses, from our point of view, that would get involved in the local campaigns for uh, resolutions and support oh, of the oh, constitutional uh -huh. amendment. Okay. So that was our alert this week. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. Excellent. Good. But other issues we're working on? Um, Statewide, um, the uh, state bank um, has been an issue that we've been trying to uh, get some traction on. Uh, fortunately, um, uh, Ted Wheeler, who's our state treasurer, has been um, interested in uh, some uh, creating some variation of that, being able to keep the state's money in the state and use that money uh, to fund um, uh, business uh, businesses within the state who are having trouble getting uh, mm -hmm. getting loans, accessing capital, uh, comprehensive uh, uh, immigration reform. Mm -hmm. ha this is uh, with the, all the agriculture and um, uh, tourism in this state. That that's uh, an issue for um, a lot of small businesses. Um, nationally, um, I don't know if you were going to mention we've been. We were one of two small business organizations that were asked to participate as friends of the court in mm -hmm. the um, uh, current case before the Supreme Court uh, uh, challenging the, um, uh, or supporting the Affordable Care Act oh, mm -hmm. um, before the uh, U.S. Supreme Court. So. Um, uh, Small business majority, I think, is the other small business that was asked. So we've been involved nationally in um, creating our arguments and our position to support the Affordable Care Act uh, in Washington, D.C. before the Supreme Court. That's going to be coming up later this month, like uh -huh. not very, uh, actually a, a more or less coincidental with the second anniversary of the Affordable Care Act. Okay. And, and so the Supreme Court has been asked to rule on the constitutionality of the whole act or just part of the act? Well, just 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 the part of the act that would, quote, mandate um, individual Purchase responsibility. And right. it's, it's, it goes back to the Florida challenge. And, and so it's the Florida challenge that reached the Supreme Court. And, and our friend of the court uh, brief that we filed with small business majority makes some arguments why why this is constitutional, why it fits into the Commerce Clause and, and other clauses of the Constitution. Oh, okay, okay. And actually, yeah. I thought the uh, Obama administration had asked to have it opened up beyond just mm -hmm. the mandate. Mm -hmm. So, it, and and the prediction is that they may have a have a dual. Uh, Multiple decisions. Uh, multiple decisions. One on everything else mm -hmm. uh, within it, and I think it's, that's going to be pretty clearly with it, well within the Constitution. Mm -hmm. And and then separately, they might rule uh, somewhat separately on the mandate. Mm -hmm. And there's some speculation because they're taking so much heat over Citizens United that they'll pull back and say, "Well, the mandate hasn't been put in place yet. Nobody's been taxed yet. We're going to." wait until that happens and uh -huh. they'll kick that down, kick that can down the road. Uh -huh. There's a lot of, you know, uh, talk. Yeah, about well, right, yeah. The, the, the Supreme Court is a little bit unpredictable. Uh, you totally. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. They may, de they may <laughs> decide that the Constitution is unconstitutional. Uh, yeah, 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 right. Yeah. <laughs> right. And they're the Supreme rulers <laughs> yeah, they're instead right. of the Supreme Court. <laughs> that they're headed that way. Right, yeah, right, yeah. So we have just a few more minutes mm -hmm. left. How do people get involved with the Main Street Alliance? Well, definitely, we're mainly looking. We do take individual members as well as organizational nonprofit members, but we we're kind of um, of the opinion, and a lot of national polling supports this, that small businesses are one of the trusted voices in America right now. Folks don't trust the federal government. They don't trust big corporations. They don't 
trust various levels of our society, but um, along with your ministers, I think small businesses often um, are, are trusted messengers. So we're looking for small businesses around the state of Oregon that will join us, mm -hmm. that will get on our distribution list, but, but we're looking for those people that are kind of politically conscious and have a bit of bandwidth they're fighting to survive every day, they're in the business every day, but they have a little bandwidth left to occasionally put their name on a letter to the editor or call their legislator and get involved on state and federal policy issues. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Would you agree? Or I any, agree. That, that beautifully said. I hope you wrote that down somewhere. Oh, I said it every day. <laughs> well, 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 good for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah we, we haven't recorded it, so you'll be able to review it later. There you go. Right, yeah. yeah. Um, let's go. If if we can bring up the slide with the details about the event. Uh, okay, so we have the slide up for, to learn more about the Main Street Alliance, uh, www.mainstreetalliance.org nationally, or here in Oregon, www.oregon.mainstreetalliance.org. Uh, then if we can bring up the other slide about the event which is coming up on April, April 27th. 27th. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. um, there we go. And just go ahead and talk about that for a minute. Yeah, there's um, four major experts, two from Harvard, Harvard Medical School and the New England Journal of Medicine, and Kathy Schoen from the Commonwealth Fund, as well as Bruce Goldberg, will be speaking on this kind of next level of where do we go on, on um, health care reform in, in America and in Oregon. And Bruce, of course, will speak from the point of view of, of Oregon and how the, the health exchange and the progress that's being made there fits into the bigger picture. Okay, good. And I see that from 9 until, from 9 until 11.30 there's a panel discussion and then we have a, you know, like a six hour break and coming back at 6 o'clock to 7.30 to have a yeah, discussion. Yeah, that would be kind okay. of the time that folks can, you know, get down and talk about it all. So okay. first, be a good first, first Congregational United Church of Christ at 1126 Southwest Park Avenue mm -hmm. in Portland. Yeah. Great. Yes. Good. Good. Thank you very much for being thank here, Lee, much. Jim. Thank, thank you, you very much. Okay. And that concludes our program for today. And I want to thank our crew for being here. Uh, Roger Bates, Beth Kerwin, Dave King, Janet Morris, and Tom Thomas. Without them, we wouldn't be on the air. The Alliance for Democracy's mission is to end corporate domination, establish true democracy, and create a just society based on sustainable, actable economy. So you can learn more at either our national website, thealliancefordemocracy.org, or our Portland website, www.afd-pdx.org. That concludes our program. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you again next week. Bye.